Okay. You never get mm. sent government don't close butter. Make your life. Make money remain open. Not okay. pour water inside basket too. Make you call A Egg Marketing now. On top 090 6462. Make I call him again. Make you hear him well. 090 6462. Or you fit to visit your office for 17A Allen yes. Avenue in Kaja. No dolo. AF Marketing. Crowded. Now you will get for mine. Hmm? About the video, about what is going on. Um, agribusiness with African farmer. Yeah, video. This is where the video starts. You're yeah, welcome to Agric Business on Lagos Talks 91.3. It is 35 minutes past the hour of 5, and it's another Monday. And every Monday from 5 30 uh, to 6 p.m., we talk about agric business, and uh, we do this with none other than. African farmer himself. Good evening, sir. Good evening. How are you today? I'm fine. Happy holidays. Well, it's not a holiday for us. But yeah. Go on to work. Happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> to all the Muslim faithful. Yes. But well, how about the ones who are not faithful? Well, we still wish them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a time for them to be to be faithful, faithful again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how was the weekend? Ah, good. good. Very interesting. Wow. You know, we're having a program I mentioned at the yes. Chamber of Commerce. So on the 29th, is yeah. it? No, 30th. 30th. Okay. Yeah, so there's a lot of work. Lot of work. I can imagine. Yeah. I can imagine. Thank God it's virtual. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to go anywhere. Yeah. But then you have to sit at a place for a while. Mm -hmm. wow. It's all good. So last week, uh, the generous African farmer gave yeah. out two whole bottles of expensive pure honey to two lucky winners from last week who were able to tell us uh, the meaning of... What, what, what question was it again? <laughs> I think we should just leave it away in case we bring it back. <laughs> we yeah. asked a question and we had two lucky winners. Uh, one of them was live on Facebook. That's African Farmer M. And another one was on our WhatsApp uh, platform. So congrats to those winners. I want to believe you have your, maybe you have your, your honey by now. Yeah, so um, one wants to get it tomorrow. Okay. To dispatch tomorrow. And the other, I misplaced the number. Oh, no. <laughs> on the paper. So I hope the person reaches out to us. Was too. it the one that? Was... Yeah, the one from in uh, f I think from your WhatsApp. WhatsApp. I'm gonna search. Yeah, so I, I think I misplaced the paper. Uh huh. As I was getting into the car. No way. If you're listening, I'm sure you are. Uh, please send me a message again, and I'm going to get your get it to you. Okay. Yeah, I, I, and there's still the last bottle is still for grabs. Yes. Yeah, so we were supposed to have uh, three winners, but last week we were only uh, able to get two. So we will have uh, one last part. So be, be so very, be there's very a new attentive. question for today. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the old question. Yeah, there's new There's a question. new question for today. Okay, guys, uh, join the live program on Facebook. Uh, he's live on Facebook, so you can see the laboratory apparatus <laughs> that has been set before us uh, african farmer is going to be practical with some things that you need to learn about beekeeping and today it's not the topic the unofficial topic is how to identify pure and real honey yeah well we have a different topic but that, that, that's <laughs> by the way but it's still about beekeeping and uh that's uh basically the theme for today's discussion beekeeping and the value involved yeah. so according to the fao uh, they put out a stats and they said that african produced 200,000 tons of honey in 27 alone in a report by the officials of the federal ministry of agriculture and development nigerian export promotions council and agriculture on beekeeping experts they said nigeria consumes about 400,000 tons of honey annually but produces less than 10 percent of its total consumption in 2018 with production currently at 15,000 tons which is so little <laughs> and they have a 2,500 tons of bee wax annually now according to another FAO reports uh, 1 million flowers and uh, 50,000 bee flights are required to produce 1 kg of honey also one beehive can produce 20 kg per year okay so Nigeria has huge potential 
just like we do in a lot of areas, <laughs> to produce the best honey due to its tropical climates. Mm. But clearly, it's underutilized. Yeah. And we have African farmer to tell us more about this. <laughs> Ways to maxify, maximize and plug into the value chain. So I have questions. First of all, how did you get involved in beekeeping? Okay, so um, my first degree is in animal production. Okay. And um, as I was thinking, which aspect of the livestock value chain is not uh, saturated? I, I don't like doing common things. Yeah. So I was thinking, what can I do apart from pig, uh, goat, cow, poultry? You know, yeah. they're common and I've done them before. So I stumbled across someone who trained in Cardiff in the US in the UK and so you do the training in the UK mm -hmm. but they fly you to Tanzania to do the practical oh. and return you back to UK okay. you know so that was really interesting for yes. me and I enrolled with the man that was uh, at year, tw year 2000 okay. 20 years ago. Yeah, 20 years ago so he trained me three weeks mm -hmm. and um, I just got in interested uh, but my first, after two weeks of theory, I went for the first practical, and my first practical was a disaster. Were you stunned? So, he, the man took ill, uh -huh. and he asked me to link up with another younger person. But from the theories, because I digested and I spent like four or five hours every day researching, wow. and so it, the, the weather was a bit cloudy, and from the theory, when the weather is cloudy, one hour before a drop of rain comes on earth the bees would have moved back into their houses oh. one hour before you see a drop of rain because if it clips the wings they'll die how do they know that that's Nature. instinct yeah you know so i told the man and i said to him that sir according to the books it's cloudy mm -hmm. the bulk of the bees will be inside and the man said are you to teach me or i'm to teach you i said sorry sir so we went to open this hive that was heavily colonized you know when it's heavy you have about 40 to 50 thousand bees there mm. but if the climate is not um showing signs of rainfall you may just have like ten thousand. so we had a full colony and the man opened it and as he opened it these things just came to as in on the net i was wearing and they were very aggressive as in i couldn't see the first time so there's an hormone we produce called pheromone. Anytime you have fear, they perceive that hormone. Once they perceive it, you are done. Wow. You are done. You know, so I fell down. So they ought to have cleaned the environment. I fell down. The bees got into my trouser, got into the veil, stung me like no man's business. I managed. So after I took off the thing, I was now having my bath by the stream in Agodi in Ibadan, Agodi Gardens yeah. and the bees came and began to sting me there again what <laughs> so, did you do? <laughs> you know, so what happens is when a bee stings you uh -huh. they leave, they call it lacets okay. it detaches from like the abdomen and is in the skin your skin? yeah okay. and it releases that poison three or four times depending on three to five really and so and anywhere they smell it it means a bee has died oh. So they also want to come and, you know, revenge. Yeah. You know, so um, wow. I ended up, and my mom told me then that, hey, you can't learn beekeeping. Bees are dangerous. Anyway, yeah. my eyes were swollen. My ankle was was swollen. Every, wow. And I was in the room for three days. I could not move. Wow. I could not do anything. And so I reached out to my mentor, well, my trainer, and he said, the day you can move, tell me. And I told him, after almost five days, he said, come. And immediately I went to him. He took me straight to the bee farm. Again, to open up. He said, because if you don't go immediately, you would have fear in your heart and you will never be able to surmount this. So he took me back there and uh, I was not stung gracefully. And that was how I started. And I went to Jigawa to serve. Unfortunately, they had a beekeeping building. Okay. I was so interested. I was in, it was so interesting. I got into the building just to see that it was 
some six seven massive buildings nothing operational there oh and it was a bee <laughs> yeah <big> facility <laughs> yeah. you know but um that gave me some opportunity to set up in jigawa okay and eventually i won the honors award wow. uh, for setting up beekeeping uh beehives mm -hmm. in five local governments and i i merged the technology of the modern and the local together mm -hmm. and yeah so it's been long since then since then yeah Wow. 20 years. 20 know. years. Wow. After, since you were stung. <laughs> were you ever stung since then? Uh, a few. A few other You know, times. but this thing is actually good for your health. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, we used to ca pick, um, carry bees around uh -huh. uh, for people who have arthritis and co. Oh. It's called epitherapy. Epitherapy is like the medicinal aspect of bees. Okay. So using bee products to treat wounds. So wounds ailments and cool you know so mm. that's it so what are the profits so far the value chain that's always what we talk about the value chain yeah. that exists in beekeeping so um we have a couple uh one is the epitherapy Epiter which you just spoke about yeah okay. epitherapy is a value chain where like a medical doctor if you're tired of medicine checking mm -hmm. humans you know that they you know everybody's complaining one doctor to three thousand you can go and specialize in epitherapy and in epitherapy you use all the bee products to treat one ailment or disease or, or the, the other, other yeah. it's big i i'm made to know it's about eight billion dollars in the u.s and uh is uh, are people here maximizing that no 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 no, no. we've not touched it oh, wow. you know that, that's why there's value chain there's pollination okay. pollination is when you rear the bees mm -hmm. not for honey but you rear the bees to help farmers pollinate their flowers so the mm. people who grow like in in florida who grow um oranges mm -hmm. they have contracts with different companies that i will supply you x tons so per tree they're expecting maybe three thousand um oranges mangoes and co yeah. so they need the bees to pollinate because it's a window of about three days for the flower not to uh, be viable to bring out fruit again yeah. So their job is to move bees all over America. It's very common in Argentina. It's very common in Brazil, um, hmm. one other South American country. So that's bee, bee pollination is big business, big. You just move bees around. Is it in Africa? Yeah, um, in Kenya, it is big. In Uganda, it's also coming, you know, up. coming up. But outside there, you don't really have people specializing in that. Okay, um, I've never heard of it before. Yeah, pollination. Um, so, uh, uh, I lost my thought, but there, th there are quite about six different chains. Okay. So equipments, so selling bee equipments, apiculture equipment, mm -hmm. um, where you're selling the smoker, the clothing, okay. you know, you're selling what the starter kit, yeah. including the hives themselves. Mm -hmm. the, that is huge. Wow. That's wow. huge. Wow. That's huge. So that, that's a value wow. chain. And there's a value chain of converting um, some of the products to exportable materials. So there's a value chain also of, um, you know, batiks. Batiks. Yeah, we call it adire. Okay. You know, where you, this adire stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so the most expensive ones come with the ones you use with bee wax because they last longer. So they, mm. there's a huge, it's large. huge value chain. Vacuum. Yeah. Uh, we, apart from honey, We've not touched it. We've not touched, you know, and, and you have um, some, I think about six uh, products, yeah. byproducts from the from, bees. From the bees. Yeah. Honey is the, honey has the least value in the beehive. Mm -hmm. So you have the propolis, which is highly used by the pharmaceuticals. And in the local communities, the rural communities, the canos mm -hmm. in those days, they will use the propolis to seal up the canals. Um, Alaji Idris is one of my coaches. Um, during my NYC, he actually, you know, gave me a lot of time. I hope he's watching this on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. You know, he gave me his time. And I went to one of the apiaries. That's what you call a bee farm. Yeah. And we opened the, the hive and we saw something brownish sealed to the wall. It was a small rat that came into the hive. That they stung and killed, and they use propolis to preserve. So in Egypt, they use propolis to preserve those mummies. 
So nothing it, if you, <laughs> they use it to embalm, that's the word. Yeah. Yeah, so they use it to embalm. Um wow. so there's honey, uh there's royal jelly, every fertility pill. Don't let me say every. Most most. A chunk of them has what you call royal jelly. And so the queen meets once in her lifetime and delivers one thousand five to three thousand eggs per day mm. for about one one and a half to three years. That's the queen bee. The queen bee. Okay. You know, so that royal jelly is the only food the bee the queen bee consumes. Mm. You know, so um that's why it's very potent and you, you have the bee wax. Uh and so when you're going through NYSC, they tell you don't uh, make up because most of the good lipsticks have bee wax in it. Yes. Yeah. So lip gloss especially. Yeah, it has bee wax in it. Yeah. And so how is bee wax produced? Bee wax is like a nursing mother that uh, has milk discharges at some latter stage in pregnancy. So the bee wax is produced from the body of the bees. Okay. So when they find it outside, mm -hmm. there's an attraction to come and get what should be inside oh. that is outside. So they just want to come and get it. They don't plan to sting you. Okay. But as you wave your hands, they sting you. Yeah, it, it sends a fair signal to them. And so they must get their product from your lips. Yeah. And that's why uh, the sting. So there's pollen. Pollen is high in protein. Mm. Uh, and so the bees mix pollen and, and, and honey together, yeah. you know, as a complete food. So contrary to general belief. Uh, that that yeah. is just honey. Yeah. So many say honey is bees poo. But actually honey is bees food. So, mm. yeah, I did, honey, I didn't know that. honey is bees food. That's the only food they eat. So they go to the nectar, mm -hmm. suck nectar, mm -hmm. digest it, regurgitate it into the cell. Uh, the bee wax, mm -hmm. no, no, the bee comb, sorry, bee comb, okay. yeah, in, in, in the hive, and many of the bees regurgitate it and they eventually end up as honey. Yeah. And so, when they when it ends up as honey, they now have to fan it the moisture content very, very low, you mm -hmm. know, from over 70 percent to 16 to 24, depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. And so, when they fan it low, that's when you call it ripe honey. They now cap it and seal it. So when they say honey doesn't go bad, that's the type of honey that doesn't go bad. There are types that go bad and yeah. there are types that don't. So the ones that are adulterated, uh, mm. those ones go bad because yeah. you have to add either water. Yeah. Um, there's this there's this general one they feed to animals, molasses. Yeah. You know, you mix a lot of things. But once the bees cap it, forget it. Yes, it, it's there. Wow. Is beekeeping this strategic very 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 strategic very interesting you need to see um alaji idris work with bees it doesn't wear clothes to work with bees again the man the man is a bee now wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow 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 i have i have more questions and i'm sure our listeners do i've never Listen to someone talk so passionate about <laughs> bee before and have this level and wealth of experience. I've learned it's feel, it feels like I knew nothing about bees until today, mm. and and thank you for that. But I have more questions for you. How can you really, really, really identify and differentiate between beekeepers' honey and diluted honey? You just talked about the ones that go bad, so I'm asking you these questions because I want you to demonstrate. And before you start, okay, give us two minutes, okay, to please invite more people to your live so okay. they can see this oh okay please uh, we, we he's live on his facebook right now i've sent the address to someone it's african farmer m right? yeah uh, and uh, that's the fan page but you can also watch african farmer folu mogaji african farmer space folu you will see mogaji okay on facebook on facebook so please go there right now because it's lights camera action here we're about to show you how to identify or differentiate between original B and of course the diluted ones okay so this is a very hygienic way of doing it okay there are many ways um, but this is very important so get a glass cup that is transparent yeah you can see through pour water make sure it's quite long yeah um pour water in it mm -hmm. and take the honey mm -hmm. you know honey drops like a strand of hair 
so you gradually just drop the honey in it mm. and you see the honey just go down now mm. so instead of you looking up or looking down mm -hmm. what you should do is to look through the glass through the glass, the glass and be looking for I this have, as this, as the strand of honey is going down mm -hmm. you'll be looking through if it's diffusing by the side the impurities you can see it's just a straight strand going down yeah the impurity will be dissolved diffusing by the side huh. so what people do just go and look down or look up they don't look through okay so you see this is not adulterated because anything they add to it, it will just be diffusing at the strand it's going down so people go and look down honey does not mix easily with water so people go down to look at what is at the bottom yeah without looking through it without looking through it so the real honey will go down yeah but the adulteration they would have missed it mm. because it will be diffusing you know moving out of that honey yeah you just see some spreading spreading yeah so people go and look down so if it's adulterated mm. 50 percent 60 percent They'll say, oh, it's original because the honey is down. down. No, but but they've missed it. So yeah. you look through, don't look up, don't look down. Wow. That's a very clean and hygienic way of checking wow. for real honey. Wow. Did you see that? Wow. If you missed now it, go to the Facebook. But then again, when buying it, I'm not sure you can okay. come with a glass. So, so when you're buying it, uh -huh. get, get sand. The sand by wherever you are. Mm -hmm. Drop it. Honey is in droplets, so okay. it drops. Mm -hmm. And you can use the tip of your finger just to pick it up. If you have Gary here, I'll show you. You okay. can use Gary also. Okay. You pick it up, it drops. You pick it the tip mm -hmm. and it follows your hand. Oh. If it's adulterated, if you pour it in Gary, you know, water soaks up. Oh, it's to soak it up. You will soak it up. Oh. But if it's not adulterated, you pick it, you drop, oh. you keep picking with the tip of oh. your fingers, oh. you know, and that's the way to know oh. okay. if you have good honey. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> how do we, how, how can, <laughs> I, I know that people still want to win that, this big yeah. bottle of honey. Okay. What's the question today? So the question today is, if, how did the rural people, the people in the villages, how did they used to know mm -hmm. that uh, an egg is bad? We need to know how, because I don't know how, how to know bad Yeah, so how egg. did the rural people, the rural people, yeah, used to and still the method they used to identify bad, bad eggs? eggs. Hmm. 0809191313. Or zero eight zero nine two 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 zero nine one three. You can also call zero eight zero nine two three four five nine one three. The rural people, back in the day and still till date, how do they identify bad eggs? Honey what, for grabs. What is the method? Honey for grabs. Uh, best believe it's the, the honey, the original honey. Lagos talks. Good evening. Hello. Good afternoon. Good evening. I'm an elderly person. Oh. Ah, good evening. Sorry. Good evening. Uh, What's your name? I'm Kapama. Good evening. Good evening. Please, Olawale from Sabo. Olawale. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. I think this, um, this how do the other people used to know if, if the egg go back. But mm -hmm. they, they will shake it out. It won't make any sound. Sound. Okay. Okay. So they will shake it. And if it doesn't make any sound, it's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Lagos Talks. Lagos Talks. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Shoma. I'm calling from Ajegule. Shoma from Ajegule. Answer the question. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So, that's like my method, though. A friend you of shake. mine taught me. Besides Okay. So if it shakes it and it actually shakes, then the egg is bad. Mm. But if it somehow rigid, then it shakes. So okay. if it so if it shakes, it's bad. But if it's a little bit rigid, it's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Right. Thank you. Lagos talks. Hello. Good evening. Hello, good, evening. good evening. What's your name? Uh, my name is Sylvester. Your name is? Sylvester. 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 All right. Sylvester Simon. Go yeah. ahead. The, the way our uh, forefathers used to know egg that is bad, 
is to place the egg on a flat uh, surface mm -hmm. to the table. If the smaller is the smaller edge of it dips down, mm -hmm. which means the egg is bad. Uh, if it stays balanced, the egg is okay. Mm -hmm. If the smaller edge, edge of it dips down, that it goes down lower than the other part, mm -hmm. the egg is bad. Yeah. All right, thank you. Lagos Talks. We can take let's, let's, let's go on a quick break. We'll be back. Uh, in the meantime, tweet at Lagos Talks 913. That is Lagos Talks 913. Stay with us. Victor, hmm? I don't tire. I want to do them as hot as they do. No, no, no. Hey, ma. Last class, it be like your village put on cash. You. I sure said they don't they prepare special yeah. room for you for village. Mm. Ah, ah, waiting at all. Yeah, no, no. I'll be you never okay. hear say technology so. don't enter and record job. You feel to plant plenty crops yeah, like corn, cassava, oh, rice, and vegetables. You will not go even touch right. any hole or glass, and you go get a boku harvest. Now to contact AF Marketing. Eh? What did they people. do? Okay. AF Marketing. They no, can no, sell no. correct seed, ogbonge fertilizer, and agro chemicals. Hmm? Then go even give you look the sun. business advice. Yeah, okay. Comfort okay. help you find market for your produce. Ha! I beg. I be bola by your meat. Put the egg in the water. I be never use government don't close border. Not Put the egg in the water. It floats. If it floats, too. it's bad. Like then if it sink, it's good. I've been calling on Facebook. Six thousand six four six two. Put the egg in some water. Here and where. Zero nine zero. And it's all. And it's all. Six four six two. Oh, you fit to visit your office. And it's all. Put the egg in the water. Avenue, Ikeja. No dollo. That's all. You don't stop there. Only I've been calling. Explain. If it's bad, it floats. If it's good, it sink. Yeah. Hey, welcome back to Agric Business NG with African Farmer. We'll be taking two calls and we're still looking for the winner. Lagos Talks. Good evening, Lagos Talks, Good African evening. Farmer. Good evening. What's your name? Yes. My name is Deborah. Deborah, okay. Yes. Um, how to identify heads on the past or in the rural areas? This is how they go about it. They are going to fold their hands in a kind of circular format mm -hmm. and they're going to look through the egg mm -hmm. if it's an healthy egg or if the egg doesn't have any fault at all it's going to be as clear very smooth mm -hmm. but if the egg is a bad egg it's going to be low in visually hmm. okay yeah so what's the name deborah afolabi deborah. Right. deborah afolabi okay so we'll just go quick um, two of you have it, so I had one more egg, one more honey on it. Too. So who are the winners? I've been bola by on me on Facebook said you drop it in water, the bad ones will float, the good ones will go down. Sink, yeah. And uh, Deborah Afolabi. also, Deborah Folabi also got it. Wow. You look through face in the sun, mm. uh, and that's how to get it. So wow. please send in your contacts, please. so we can know. How yes, to reach you. To reach you. All right, so uh, Deborah Falabi, send us a message on Twitter or on WhatsApp, okay? On Twitter, it's Lagos Talks 913. That's Lagos Talks 913. Send us a message and uh, we'll send you, you know, we'll talk and how to get it. Yeah, so there's an event this Saturday, 30th of May, yeah. um, put together by the Agri Group at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce. Uh, I happen, I'm privileged to be the Chairman of Agriculture. Um, so we're bringing all the commissioners of agriculture in Southwest, hmm. Oyo, Ogun, Ondo, Ekiti, Oshon, Lagos State. They're going to be talking, presenting two to three projects that investors, cooperatives, and individuals can participate in. Okay. You don't want to miss it. Um, you can go on my Facebook, African Farmer Fulumogaji, or at African Farmer M on any of the social media handles, or you go to Lagos Chamber. Lagos, LagosChamber.com okay. and the upcoming event you click there. Mm -hmm. Please attend. Information is what separates the guys who are ahead and the guys who struggle. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. It may be Oyo that will say something that you can do in a kitty. Yeah. And it might be Lagos that may say something that you can go and replicate. Yeah. But there's a value chain flow with policy. Hmm. Some months ago, we saw a policy disrupt the transportation bikes. Hmm. So you don't want to be on the negative side of policy. So whatever government is promoting, government will protect. Of course. So just look for a value chain within in. what they are promoting yeah. and plug in. There's nothing you want to think about. Whatever your profession is, 
you can find something to do. And now, it's this Saturday. This Saturday, 10 a.m. May it's on 30th. May 30th. Okay. It's on Zoom. Okay. Um, and I think and the it, links will be out on your platform. Yeah, the links are already out on our okay, platforms. Good. Please show up. It's free. Show up, and it's free. Yes. Show up. You never can tell. Hmm. Thank you. See you Saturday. Thank you. And, and, and most importantly, please help us share the message. Oh. Somebody on your contact needs it. All right. Thank you so much. It's Agriculture, and this is Agri Business with African Farmer. Thank you so much, African Farmer. We'll be back next week, Monday. And of course, and we're talking about snails. We're talking about snails. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to connect a snail expert. I did my project on snails. I, I rear snails I for a long snail. year. I tried to buy snail yesterday. It was really expensive. African. I'm farmer. a bit rusty mm. on snails, okay. but I still know the basics. Okay. But I'm going to bring somebody that I'm going to talk to uh, via phone okay. uh, and uh, snail farming. Yeah. Or, or dig it up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Get ready. It's always something new and exciting with uh, African farmer. We'll be back next week, uh, Monday from. 5 30 p.m. to 6 p.m. and this time it will be on snails. Don't go anywhere. Coming up next is the wise man of comedy on It's Okay with Okay. Trust me, they're already in the building and they can't wait to talk to you. Stay with us. Money. Is <laughs>